Good day again, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back again. And we're looking at assets and bases today, um, looking at question seven from the uh, recent prelim that was written uh, based on the Gauteng paper, but uh, it was actually sourced from the November 2020 second edition, right? Uh, so uh, if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family. Eh? And if you need some uh, help uh, and assistance, right, please just contact uh, info at mlungisinkosi.co.za that's if you need assistance with mathematics or physical science and will be your plug as you young people say <laughs> all right so um, let's continue with that question so they say we've got two beakers that is a and b uh, that contain strong bases so in beaker a we've got 500 cubic centimeters of barium hydroxide uh, with an unknown concentration and we've got 400 cubic centimeters of uh, potassium hydroxide with a concentration of 0 0.1 moles per cubic decimeters right and the first thing they ask us is to define a base according to the arrhenius theory and remember arrhenius said a base is a substance that uh, dissociates or ionizes uh, in water or in solution to form hydroxide ions, right? So remember, in the base, we are forming hydroxide ions, right? Okay, they say calculate the number of moles of uh, hydroxide ions in beaker B. All right, so they want to know how many moles of hydroxide ions did we have. So first of all, we need to know, okay, how does potassium hydroxide ionize? So I know that potassium hydroxide becomes K plus and OH minus. Okay, right, sorry about that. Okay, so I know that I would have um, potassium plus ions and I would have hydroxide ions that are formed there, right? So in this case, I want to find out the number of moles. Now, already I know that for every one mole of potassium hydroxide, I'll get one mole of hydroxide ions, right? So I need to now find out what is the number of moles of what? Of, um, uh, um, you know, my, my hydroxide uh, uh, ions, or rather my potassium hydroxide. So I'm going to say, well, concentration is number of moles over volume, right? But I want number of moles, so this is going to be concentration times volume. So this is going to be 0 0.1 multiplied by, please note that the volume is in cubic centimeters. So I'm going to convert it to cubic decimeters. You divide that by 1,000. So 400 divided by 1,000 will give me 0 0.4. And it means the number would be 0 0.04 moles. That's for potassium hydroxide. However, therefore it means number of moles for hydroxide ions will also be 0 0.04 moles and the only reason for that is that there's a one-to-one -one ratio with potassium hydroxide okay right i hope that makes sense for you okay um as we continue okay so the next question they say to us um, so the contents of beaker a and beaker b are added together in beaker c all right, they say the solutions of beaker C uh, has a pH of 13. Whew. All right, now they say to us, assume that the volumes are additive and that the temperatures of the solutions are 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now we need to calculate the concentration X of barium hydroxide. Now, I'm going to take you slowly, one step at a time through this question. I want you to please stay with me. There's nothing hard about it. You'll see that it's just something that is uh, that can be quite easily understood. Okay. So I'm going to start with finding out. Now, remember, they told me the pH of the uh, resulting solution, right? So if I can find out the number of moles of my hydroxide ions inside here. Now, remember, the number of moles of hydroxide ions here come from this guy, come from that guy. So here's my rationale. 
if we can find the total number of moles here, we've already found out the number of moles that would have been supplied by this guy. It would have been 0 0.04, isn't it? So the difference would actually give us now the number of moles there. We've got concentration. We've got the, I mean, we've got the volume rather, so we can find out what the concentration is. I'm sure you, you catch my drift, right? Okay, so let's find out. So we know pH is going to be minus the log of my hydronium ions. Now, please note those are not hydroxide ions. So I'm going to find uh, H3O plus ions. Concentration is 10 to the minus pH. Okay. Please remember, if I want the concentration of the hydroxide ions, I just simply say 10 to the minus pH. This will be 10 to the minus uh, 13. Remember, that was given as 10 to the minus 13, right? Okay, so uh, the concentration of my H3O plus, okay, is 10 to the minus 13. In fact, I'll just leave it at, as that uh, and say moles per cubic decimeters. Now, I've got the concentration of my hydroxide, uh, hydronium ions, but I know that the ionization constant, remember, this is for a base, right? I'm not looking for hydroxide, I'm looking for hydronium, right? Uh, uh, sorry, I'm not looking for hydronium, which is this guy. I'm looking for hydroxide. So I'm going to say, well, let me find out the concentration of the hydroxide ions. Remember, I want the concentration of my hydroxide ions in there, right? So I'm going to say, this is, uh, by the way, you're given this formula. This is 10 to the minus 14. Remember, this is at, uh, uh, we, we, we say at 25 degrees, right? This would be the constant, okay? So I've got the concentration of my hydroxide, uh, hydronium, that's 10 to the minus 13. I want the concentration of my uh, hydroxide okay and this is the con the product of the two will give us 10 to the minus 14 i'm just dragging this so obviously we uh, we divide by 10 to the minus 13 on both sides 10 to the minus 13 and that cancels with that so the concentration of my hydroxide ions okay will now be 10 to the minus 1, which is 0 0.1 moles per cubic decimeters. Okay, so that's 0 0.1 moles per decimeters cubed. Okay, right. Now, that is the concentration of a hydroxide ions, right? So, I know, would it be possible for me to find out the number of moles of my uh, um, you know, of, uh, um, of hydroxide. So I'll say, now I know the concentration and, and I know that number of moles is concentration times volume, right? I've got the concentration of the hydro uh, hydroxide, which is 0 0.1, which we just found there. But what is the volume of my resulting solution? Remember, what did we do? We added those two volumes in there, right? So what would be the volume of this pH of 13? It would be 500 plus that 400, which is 900. But remember, we divide that by 1,000 to make it in cubic decimeters. So that will be multiplied by 0 0.9. Okay, so that would give me... Okay, I'm just going to take this up a bit. So this will be 0 0.09 moles. So that is the number of moles of what? Of hydroxide ions in my solution uh, with a pH, my resulting solution. Okay, right. If you don't mind, I'm just going to continue over to this side. Now I'm going to say to myself, okay, so now that we've got the total, which means after we've added the two solutions, this is the resulting amount of hydroxide ions. Remember, this is the OH minus ions, right? So therefore, what would have been the number of moles of hydroxide ions that were added uh, from beaker A? You can uh, almost understand. We found these ones. We found them to be 0 0.04. The result was 0 0.05 there. So this tells us that the number of moles... Um, 
uh, of hydroxide ions in A, right, is going to be that total. Okay, so I'm going to say it's going to be that total or resulting minus the number of moles in pika B, right? Okay, yeah, let's call that the result. Let's call that in uh, B, okay? So this will be 0 0.09 minus 0 0.04. Um, 0 0.04, right? So it means that would be 0 0.05. Okay, right. Um, so now that we've got the number of moles as 0 0.05, remember what were they asking for? They were asking for the concentration, right? Now, you need to be extra careful here because we now need to find out, okay, um, how would barium hydroxide ionize? So barium hydroxide, you can see it's got 2OH. So therefore, it means it will become Ba2 plus plus 2OH minus. Can you see that? Okay. Okay. Uh, our question said calculate the concentration of what? Of barium hydroxide. Okay. We've got the number of moles of hydro, uh, hydroxide ions. So we can find out what is, in this case, the number of moles of uh, barium hydroxide. Notice, for every two of that, there's one of that. Okay, so barium hydroxide, one mole of that gives us two moles of hydroxide ions. So in this case, I know for every one barium hydroxide, okay, I will get two moles of hydroxide ions. So my question is, for how many moles of barium hydroxide will I therefore, sorry, will I get 0 0.8? 0, 0.5 and of course i'm sure you know how to navigate this by now 2 times n will give me 2n 1 times 0 0.05 will give me 0 0.05 remember i'm only taking the coefficients right so divide that by 2 so it means that the number of moles of barium hydroxide okay will be what that divided by 2 this will be 0 0.025 moles okay Right, so these are the number of moles of barium hydroxide, right? So we are looking for the concentration, get that, right? So we've got the number of moles. So I'm simply going to say, well, for number of moles, we've got the volume, our volume was given as 0 uh, 0.500 cubic centimeters rather. So we know concentration is simply number of moles divided by volume. A number of moles is 0 0.025. Our volume is 500 cubic decimeters, uh, centimeters rather, but remember we needed to convert it to cubic decimeters, so we divide by 1,000, so that becomes 0 0.5. And so all that we simply do is to find that, and um, if we divide that by 0 .0, uh, 0 0.5, the same as multiply that by 2, so our resulting concentration, that's 0 0.05, moles per cubic decimeters i hope i i try to explain that in a way that makes sense to all of us okay right so that is how you would do it we found the number of moles of the resulting solution we subtracted the number of moles from the other solution and as a result we worked out the concentration essentially that is it Right, as we move along, okay, so let's continue with the rest of the questions. So they told us that, uh, okay, so the next question says, the solution in beaker C, all right, now we know the concentration and we know the volume, is titrated uh, with ethanoic acid. It is found that 15 cubic centimeters of this solution neutralizes 30 cubic centimeters of the acid, okay? So they took uh, a, um, a, a beaker C and they titrated it uh, with ethanoic acid, okay? And we know that they are going to react with one another. 
All right, so we need to find out first how are they going to react with each other. Okay, so they are telling us, okay, there's the ethanoic acid for every one of that. It takes one mole of uh, uh, hydroxide ions. All right, that's all that we need to know uh, for the titration. They said, is ethanoic acid a weak or a strong acid? We know that ethanoic acid is a weak acid. And why is that? Uh, because it does not ionize completely in solution. Okay, so it gives a low concentration of uh, hydronium ions. All right. And um, the next question, they say calculate the concentration of ethanoic acid. So I'm going to use uh, the, you know, CAVA over CBVB uh, formula is equals to Na over Nb. So I'm going to assume that the acid, that's my A. And the hydroxide ions, that's my B. So I'm going to say, well, do I know the concentration of the acid? No, that's what they said I must find. So I'm going to leave this as CA multiplied by the volume of the acid. They told me it's 15 cubic centimeters. Okay. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Not then the, but they said it, it neutralizes 30 cubic centimeters. So that's going to be 30 divided by concentration of the base. You remember the concentration of the uh, hydroxide ions, right? Remember, we found it in the previous, uh, uh, you know, in, in the previous question, right? Uh, let's check that quickly. Right, uh, we found it to be 0 0.1. You remember we found that concentration of the hydroxide ions to be 0 0.1 from that, okay? So I know that my concentration would be 0 0.1 okay of my hydroxide ions but what is my volume okay they said it's 15 cubic centimeters okay and by the way what do i know for every one of that there's one of that so number of moles of acid is one number of moles of the base that's also one and all that we need to do is just our mathematical gymnastics that's 30 ca will give us 0 0.1 times 15 which will be 1.5, and we divide both sides by 30, okay? And CA will be equals to 1.5 over 30, uh, so that will give me, okay, so that's 0 0.05 moles per cubic decimeters, okay? That would be the concentration of the acid all right and that's how the cookie crumbles ladies and gents and we leave it here thank you so much and we'll see you again next time when we discuss the other sections i'm sure you are enjoying this otherwise from me i'll see you next time shop shop